today we are going to be doing some tags with the Dang Inks from BombingScience.com. We're going to be testing out how they drip, how they tag and feel to work with, as well as how they stain by not only doing a full chemical buff test, but also by doing a layering test to see how many layers of paint these inks from Bombing Science bleed through because a lot of people forget the things you want in a good graffiti ink are obviously how well it writes but also how well it stains or stands up to a buff and how well it bleeds through so with all that being said let's get to it so i'll tell you everything that you graph heads are gonna want to know about this dang ink while we do our surface tagging test in a minute but first let me tell you how i was able to get my hands on these dang ink refills basically when these were just finished being developed and released by the team over at bombing science fred not this fred that's freddy ferocious the Fred you get emails from. He hit me up and said, hey, we just got these new inks in. Do you want to test them out? So of course, on all of your behalf, I said, hell yes, I'd want to test them out. So he said, sick, I'll get a package together, send it over to you. And what he sent over was three of the colors of the dang ink refills. They currently have four on their site. The violet, they've got a red, a black, and they also have a blue of some sort. If any of you guys have used the blue, any of these colors or other ones that might not be in stock on their site right now leave a comment let me know what you think i'd love to read it we are going to head over to our testing area right now but the point here that i wanted to make was that bombing science does not tell me what to say about these inks at all i have the freedom to say whatever i want about them they are the ones that have confidence in their own product enough to send it out to a graffiti artist like me and get his honest feedback. And that to me is what says a lot about the Dang brand in general and the team over at Bombing Science as well. It brings me back to what Fred said when I did a short interview with him when we were first reviewing the Dang Flex 15 mops when they came out, where he said, this is what Dang is all about. We want writers to paint more, but not with cheap quality tools. And them having the confidence to send me over these without saying um, that I have to emphasize anything about them in particular. I think that tells you that they really do try and make these high quality supplies at a cheap price. But that's what we're here to test out today. So let's fill up one or two of those dang flex mops I just mentioned and get some tags done. <laughs> First, we are going to be doing a few tags with each color of the dang ink formula here to really get a feel for how drippy the ink formula is, how it feels to write with, all that sort of thing. And then after that, we are going to be doing another mini episode of our little series, Will It Buff? where we take a look at the most permanent graffiti supplies on the market and see, will they buff? So as you can see, I've got a tag up here. It's had about 24 hours now to settle into this unfinished polyplastic PVC surface. And that is what we're going to be trying to buff when we do our buff test with some of the most common buffing materials that most people are gonna be trying to use to buff tags. And then with the second tag that is right below it here, that is what we're going to be doing a covering test with us, the second part of our buff test that we're doing today, where we're gonna see how many layers of paint an ink like this can bleed through. Just something some of you very astute viewers might notice, this has got a little bit of luster to it, and that is because I filled up the dang mop that had a silver in it. It was their silver dang paint formula before for. So it's got a bit of leftover silver particles in there, which is giving that a nice little luster. So this stuff might make a good combination with that silver. I don't know, something to try out. But right now I'm gonna start tagging up those names of those who have been supporting over on the Patreon, as well as those who have asked for a hit off in one of these videos here. So let's get right into it while I tell you about this dang ink formula. Oh, 
So the dang ink refills come in four ounce or 118 milliliter bottles to be exact. Right now they're selling for 11.44 Canadian, which is $9.95 US. And for those of you who stick around till the end, that is when I'll be telling you exactly how much cheaper the dang inks are than some of the other major graffiti ink brands on the market. That'll help you know which one you should be picking up. So onto the tags here. The first thing I want to say about the red in particular, the purple as well, but the red, the color vibrancy is definitely there. Very, very vibrant colors. Purple and black, very true purple, dark violet, and the black, it is a 100% black, black ink. The one thing I did notice about the red in particular is it is miles more drippy than the other two ink colors in particular. I have no good explanation for what it is. It's obviously just there's something a little bit different the way they formulated that red compared to the other ones. Maybe it's because it's a lighter color. Sometimes with lighter colors, some monkier stuff has to be done to make them work. I don't know if that's the case here. It certainly still performs like an ink though. You're getting the nice lines. You're getting the drips where they should be. They're not separating in any way. You're getting a very consistent color all the way through. I love the parts of tags here where it sort of slides down. That allows you to see the color consistency all the way through there, and that is spot on with this red dang ink. The opacity for the most part, very strong, especially with the darker colors, of course. One thing I did notice is that down at the bottom when I'm doing the black tags there, specifically like or with the spook tag, you can see the silver paint underneath coming through, and that is actually on the run marker paint, which we're tagging over here here and a little bit of that is making its way through the dang ink. It should be because this does say on the bottle alcohol based ink and I know the OTR is also alcohol based so it could just be because they're the same base. It is in the nature of inks more than paints as well to reactivate whatever is under there because of their staining nature. The inks, what they do is they sort of seep in there and part of their seeping capabilities comes from their ability to reactivate whatever surface they're on. So that could be what's happening there a little bit. It's not necessarily something you should be worried about with this ink. The purple is a nice color and this is the case with a lot of purples and blues. It's sort of nice because you do get that almost two-tone effect where you can see the swooping motion that was used in each letter of the tag. I really love that about using inks in general, but you get that effect really nicely with the purple dang ink here. The black, on the other hand, if you want something that is just contrast for days, this black is, is just, it is black. I don't think I need to say more than that, really. There's just no streakiness whatsoever in that black. It's a very solid ink, fairly thick for the most part black ink's usually a little bit thicker anyways but yeah that black is a serious black ink right there so as fun as it is to be messing around with these dang inks in the flex 15 bobs throwing up some tags i know what you guys are all waiting for it's what i'm waiting for the next installment of will it buff and that is exactly what we are going to test out right now with this get buff tag using some of the most common buffing supplies you'll find out there. The one I always use is this Trem Clad Graffiti Remover. I've said it before, I use it mostly just because it takes care of everything. If we need to, we're gonna try an all-purpose remover. Generally, I find this works a bit better with inks rather than paints, so if we have to employ that, we'll break out that. As I outlined previously, this tag has had roughly 24 hours now to seep into the unfinished portion of this surface, and that's probably a realistic time frame to where someone would notice a tag and want it buffed if they did want it buffed. So we're gonna try and get rid of this right now. Just gonna try part of the tag here. I don't wanna, you know, waste everyone's time. We are immediately getting some of that uh, bleeding effect that you get. Specifically, inks will do that for you. Too early to tell. Let's keep at it. Now, right now, I know you can see it on camera a little bit, but to me, this is a very, very clear ghost of a tag. After just one day of sitting in there at the surface, I'm gonna try a bit of this stuff on it because this stuff really tends to mess with the inks. 
I know I said I'd make the picture a little more clear, and that seems to have done the opposite, but hopefully you're seeing the ghost that I'm seeing here because it is very clear, very present. That may not look too significant, but for having about 24 hours to settle into the surface, there is a bit of a ghost there. What I have found buffing all the stuff off of this <laughs> surface over and over again, a lot of which you can see on the Patreon too if you don't believe me, is it takes a bit longer for some of these inks to settle into the surface. So with 24 hours there being a bit of a ghost to me, that's a sign that this is a serious ink, at least you can say, or at least as serious an ink as the ones it's competing with on the market, like your grog inks, your on the run inks, even the Molotow ones. To me, this is right up there with how I've seen those perform on this particular surface. So I think that answers the question of will it buff? By the way, if you do wanna see more exclusive buff tests, you can see those over on the Patreon. I'll have a link in the corner to it. It'll be at the end of the video too. We buffed a ton of different materials there, and those are available exclusively on the Patreon for those of you who are in interested. But now we want to answer the question, will it bleed? And that is what we are going to do right now. We're going to do a layering covering test. So we're going to get right to that. So the first coat on these layering tests always looks a little bit skimpy, but that really is just because of how much bleed through is actually happening here. You'll notice for the second layer, I'm using a yellow. I'm alternating white and yellow just so we can keep track of how many layers are happening here. I'm using the Dang Prime paint as well as the Dang High Flow paint there as well. Just so you're all aware, I am speeding up the clips in between where the layers of paint are drying so we literally don't have to watch paint dry, or at least if we do, it's at 20 times the natural speed. The third layer there is really where the tag kind of taps out, but the fourth really solidifies that, so we're cutting it off at four layers here. So is this dang ink formula from Bob and Science actually worth picking up? Well, I'll tell you what we know about it, and then I actually did do a cost comparison of the Dang ink versus some of the other major inks on the market. And let me tell you, the cost is not exactly what I expected. So first, let's go over what we know about this ink. It's a very good opaque ink. It stands up to the test. It looks as high quality as any of the other inks from the major brands on the market. The opacity, I would say, is generally a lot better than some of the other inks I've used on the market as well. I think that's a big selling point for it. The buff. I think it holds up about as well as a lot of the other inks on the market that are made for graffiti writers by graffiti writers, just like the dang ink here is. Again, the bleed through. I would say it was about average for an ink. We covered it with four layers of paint there and you could still see a little bit of it left. So with all of the aspects taken into account, I do have to say that in some respects it's an average ink and in some, like maybe the opacity and the thickness, it's actually a a little bit above average in terms of the quality. With all that in mind though, here are the costs compared to some of the other big brand inks on the market. If you're curious about the other ink names that I'm comparing them to, we have full reviews and buff tests of each of them here on the channel. You can check them out in the annotations in the corner or there will be a link in the description to the videos so you can go check out those inks as well. So the first ink I compared this to was the Incredible Ink by On The Run. And what I found here is that it is a straight up 20% price reduction if you're buying the dang ink over the incredible ink. And that's basically the story if you're looking at four ounce bottles. But then things got a little wonky when I was looking at the grog pricing. If you look at the grog buff proof ink, the unit price was actually 5.975 cents per milliliter. Whereas with the dang paint here, it's actually 8.43 cents per milliliter. Now that is a big price difference. And the reason for that is because the grog BPI comes in 200 milliliter bottles. And when you start comparing this to the 200 milliliter bottles, this starts to be outpaced in price. That's to be expected usually when you're buying in a bit more bulk, the price comes down a bit. So what am I saying here in conclusion? Well, it seems like Bombing Science, by putting these available in just the four ounce bottles, is competing in the higher quality ink market. I'm not saying they're doing that on purpose or by accident. That is just around the price point that their stuff is. And I'll be very interested to see if they come out with a 200 or 210 milliliter bottles of these refills. 
refills here that are a little bit less. So if you are looking to try this stuff out, the price of one of these little bottles is reasonable enough that it makes it easy to test them out. And the quality is right up there, I think, with some of the other big brands on the market. So the main deciding factor if you're going to like this Ingridon is really going to be down to personal preference. So in short, should you try it out? Yeah, I think it's a great idea to try them out and see what you think. If you did want to know more about the dang Flex 15 mops and the paint formula, not the ink formula, the paint formula here that comes in them. We have a full review and tagging test that we did on screen right now for you to check out. You can always go over to the Patreon if you want to see more of those exclusive buff tests over there. I hope to see you in that video shortly. Until then, peace.